Good morning. I am Bill Starr, your Master of Ceremonies. Welcome to all and thank you for attending the Mount Prospect annual commemoration of Memorial Day. For 150 years, we as a free nation have observed this day as a tribute to the men and women whose lives were given to the noble cause of freedom. Memorial Day was ordained by General John Logan's General Order No. 11 in 1868 to honor the fallen of the Civil War. Ladies and gentlemen, Mount Prospect's residents have long and faithfully served the United States by, by becoming members of the nation's military, protecting its shores and interests. That type of service invariably brings with it loss. This year, the veterans organizations of Mount Prospect, VFW Post 1337, and American Legion Post 525 have taken it upon themselves to permanently memorialize those from Mount Prospect who have made the ultimate sacrifice while in wartime and peacetime service to the United States. It is altogether fitting that these individuals be recognized today, Memorial Day. The program you received entering the park today is the result of many hours of research and hard work. It provides a listing of all the Mount Prospect residents who died while serving this country along with significant additional details about each of them. You're all invited to visit the special memorial created on a single stone pillar right next door in the, in the Veterans Memorial. Shortly after the close of this program, we will conduct a brief dedication of the memorial pillar and read the names of those listed. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the Mount Prospect Community Band under the direction of Monty Adams. The multiple award-winning Marching Knights in Color Guard under the direction of Chris Barnum. And also to all of you who have joined us faithfully over the years, thank you all. And I will call on Pastor Russ Bechtolt, who will give the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Posts will remain covered. As you know, Lord, <clears throat> we are gathered here today to remember and honor all those who have given their lives in the service of our country. It is our prayer that all that we say, think, and do here will totally reflect our gratitude for their great sacrifice. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us that the greatest demonstration of love is to lay down our lives for another. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Now let us continue the program with the renewal of our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, led by retired Air Force Colonel Bob McKillop. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing, remove your caps, and place your hand over your heart. Posts and firing detail, attend, hup, present, whoo! Bob? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Post and firing detail order. Cool. At ease. Thank you. Please take your seats. And now the prospect marching knights and color guard will play a patriotic medley.
Chris Barnum told me that they had been rehearsing that for a couple of days. The Mount, thank you very much, by the way. That, that was great. The Mount Prospect Community Band will now play America the Beautiful, followed by a salute to all members of the armed forces, past and present. Veterans and their present service members, when they play your service song, please stand and be recognized. Maestro, if you please.
Excellent, thank you. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce this year's keynote speaker. Captain Cody Rogers is a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point and was commissioned as an officer in the spring of 2007. Following completion of combat engineer training, he deployed with, 14th, with the 14th Engineer Battalion to Iraq. During his 15-month tour, Captain Rogers and his platoon cleared thousands of kilometers of roads of improvised explosive devices and roadside bombs, thereby saving countless lives. Captain Rogers deployed a second time, this time for a full year, to Afghanistan. Same mission, clearing deadly hazards from roads. Same result, many saved lives. Captain Rogers is now safely home and a resident of Chicago, where he is director of communications for a noble network of charter schools. He and his wife, Sarah, are expecting their first child this summer. I am honored to introduce Captain Cody Rogers. Well, thank you, Bill, for that introduction. I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you as well to everyone who's made today's events possible. This is really a wonderful morning. I know it's a little warm, so thank you, everyone, for, for beating the heat. Uh, I'm about to tell you a, a little bit about my time in Afghanistan, though, so I think it's really just setting the stage, um, being a little warm for everybody. So um, again, thank you for being here, and thank you for everyone who put the, put the event together. I think this this year's event is particularly special because of the dedication that Bill mentioned that we'll be doing later today to uh, honor Mount Prospect Zone. And in doing so, we're able to recognize that Memorial Day is not just a broad day of national remembrance. It's actually made up of the stories of the individual actions and the sacrifice that many Americans have made through the years and that there are names and faces behind it all. So I think for that reason, Memorial Day is actually among the most personal of American holidays, or at least it should be. Um, as Bill mentioned, I spent a few years overseas, and uh, I was looking at my records before I came here, I realized I actually spent three Memorial Day holidays in some far off desert sandy places. Um, and those of us who have deployed know that holidays are a little bit different when you're over there. They tend to come and go, there's a little less time for them. You know, it would be nice if you could ask the Taliban, for example, uh, if you could have a day that you could barbecue and hang out and just rest for 24 hours. But uh, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately, right? So you just carry on. Uh, and holidays pass. They come and go. But with Memorial Day in particular, something that I learned uh, and you realize is that it's not just one day out of 365. In fact, Memorial Day can come to you at any time. So when I think about Memorial Day, I think about this thing called a ramp ceremony, and I want to describe it to you. Uh, it's one of the most profound things I think the military does to honor their dead. You might have seen something like it in news clips. It's when a casket is loaded onto a military transport plane and there's an honor guard. But what I think a lot of people don't know is that we do those ceremonies overseas whenever a service member is killed in action, uh, often away from public view. So there's no cameras, no pomp or circumstance, just a solemn private act. But it's nonetheless essential to the fabric of the US military, and I would argue our country's values as a whole. And in a way, I see that reflected in what we're all doing together today. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So um, I think it speaks to the personal nature of such a sacrifice. The last one I attended was in Afghanistan, as Bill mentioned. Um, in the spring of 2012 in a place called Helmand Province, out in the middle of the desert. And when a soldier or service member passes, word goes out around the base, and anyone who can make it, who's available, comes to the airfield. If you're tired, hungry, doing something else, it doesn't matter, you go. And when you get there, there's a military transport plane that's sitting by itself out on the airfield, and has the ramp down, and the engines are off. Then you make your way out to the back of the plane, and you form two lines on either side leading up to the ramp. And it's quiet, strangely quiet for a military base. No one speaks, no one moves. And then a casket emerges, it's draped in an American flag, and it's carried out very carefully onto the tarmac. And you stand there and salute in stillness, and then that silence is broken only by a chaplain who gives a short blessing and then by a quiet order to march the remains into the plane. And in front of you, slowly, 
passes a soldier on his or her final flight from combat. So as you stand there, you can't help but wonder about that soldier's ambitions, their hopes and dreams, where they saw themselves after the war. Who is that person? Do they have family, any children? You realize that most of their thoughts were occupied by the same things that drive all of us every day. And they were not thinking when they woke up that morning that it would be their last. And then you further realize that from that day forward, their hopes and dreams were just that, and the new reality is now one of their sacrifice, that they've given up their right to a future on your behalf, and that in your place, they went. You know, again, there, there are no cameras, there's no publicity. Sometimes a soldier's family hasn't even been notified back home. So in that moment, on a dusty airfield thousands of miles from home, there is no one else. There's nothing else. Just a few hundred of the closest brothers and sisters that that soldier will ever know, standing in honor and in solemn prayer. And that's about as personal as it gets. So that's something that I think back to every Memorial Day. Soldiers that I served with who were lost, uh, West Point classmates and friends who've given their lives for our country, people that I went to college with, that I stumbled out of bars with, that I got in trouble with that are now no longer here with us. And I think about their personal journeys and everything and every person that they left behind. And I think about what I can do to honor their sacrifice. So looking out today, I see a connection between what we do in the moments after a soldier passes on the battlefield to ceremonies just like this here this morning. It's an unbroken commitment to honor our fallen heroes. And especially what Mount Prospect is doing uh, alongside our community leaders to remember the individual people whose sacrifice is the reason that we have a Memorial Day. So I want to thank all of you, first and foremost, for being a part of this, uh, for taking time out of your day today to honor our fallen. And I'll just say, may we always honor our fallen heroes, and may we never forget their names, their stories, and their sacrifice, because each one of us has given their all, and we are a stronger, better nation because of it. Thank you all very much for your time, and have a wonderful Memorial Day. I thought last year's speech was a good one, but that one really tops it, I think. Once again, Cody Rogers. American Legion adjutant Rock Bork will now read the names of the American Legion members who have passed away during the past year, members who will be dearly missed. Rock. Frank Blake, Ronald Carlson, Edward Krakowiak, and Wilbert Peterson. VFW Commander Joe Scanlon will now read the names of the VFW members who passed away during the past year. We have somebody standing in. Chaplain Ron Willer. Charles Mickelson, Raphael Palobicki, Lester Schneider, Wayne White. Thank you. On Memorial Day, forever consecrated to our heroic dead, we are assembled once again to express sincere reverence. The symbolic grave before you represents the resting places of many departed comrades who served in all wars. Wherever the body of a comrade lies, there the ground is hallowed. Our presence here today is a solemn commemoration of all those men and women. Indeed, today we express our tribute to their devotion to duty, to their courage, to their patriotism, and to their sacrifice. They serve on the land, on the sea, and in the air. They have made us their debtors. For the flag our nation still flies over the land of a free people. 
Now I'll call upon Mount Prospect VFW Post Chaplain Ron Willer to ask the divine blessing. Father of us all, in the depth of our silent reverence, we realize the truth of the inspired words, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. As comrade after comrade departs, we march on with our ranks grown thinner. Help us to be faithful unto thee and to one another. Look in mercy upon the widows and children of our departed comrades, we beseech thee, and with thine own tenderness, console and comfort those who are bereaved. Heavenly Father, bless our country with freedom, peace, and righteousness. Through thy favor, may we meet at last before thy throne in heaven. We praise thy great name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Each year we pause on Memorial Day to remember our war dead and we search for meaning. Again this year, the Mount Prospect VFW asked our junior high and middle school students to write a short essay with the theme, What Memorial Day Means to Me. There were many, many excellent, thoughtful essays submitted and judging was very difficult. The top three winners were awarded cash prizes provided by the VFW. Here are the winners, first place, $100, Camille Martinez, 8th grader at St. Emily. Second place, $75, Paige Natinum, 7th grade, St. Emily's. And third place, a $50 check. It was a $50 bill, I can guarantee you. Sean Pandeleon, 8th grade, Lincoln Middle School. It is now my pleasure to introduce the first prize winner, Camille Martinez, who will read her winning essay for you. Camille. What Memorial Day means to me. When I think of Memorial Day, I picture the American flag waving above the tombstones of the people who courageously fought and died for the United States. Memorial Day is a day of honor and respect during which we remember those who have died while serving in the armed forces. While sorrowful feelings may come upon families, friends, and acquaintances of the dead today, we may uncover a small but strong feeling of hope and joy. Through remembering the fallen soldiers on Memorial Day, we may feel pride, and we might come to believe that these soldiers are now examples for us. We may believe more strongly that self-sacrifice can bear many fruits. On Memorial Day, Americans remember any lives that were lost because of fighting in a war. We remember how these people have sacrificed their lives in love for their country. We recall one's role as two groups fought against each other. People may visit the graves of those that were lost, share stories of their lives, attend a parade, and simply wave the American flag to celebrate Memorial Day. We consider the actions of the people who have died honorable because they became selfless to serve. They fought for various reasons, but I believe that these people all served out of pride and love for their country. Memorial Day is also about comforting those that were left behind. We care for families, friends, and coworkers. We care for anyone who knew someone who had died while fighting for the US. These people may have felt sad that someone important to them was lost but they may also feel proud of the person they knew that had served. They may feel grateful that they had the opportunity to know someone that laid down their life in service to their country. The role of those who comfort is to help others feel those positive emotions of pride and gratitude as we all remember those who have passed away while serving our country. On this day, we remember the people we knew, as well as the people we did not know. Memorial Day unites all of us for one purpose, to remember the fallen forces and to show pride for them and our country. No matter our age or our appearance, an American is an American. 
we stand united as Americans who love their country and are thankful for the service of the armed forces. In this unity, we are not weak and scared, but strong and brave. Looking up to those who have died in service, we boldly believe that self-sacrifice is important to our country's growth. Memorial Day means more than a day home from school. On Memorial Day, we recall the lives that were lost in service to our country, and we comfort those who knew someone that died in service. We do both of these united, and we work together to support the spirit of self-sacrifice for our country. Thank you, Camille. It is young Americans like you that shoulder the responsibility of carrying on the true meaning of Memorial Day to the next generation of which you are a part. Your essay clearly is proof that you are prepared to do just that. We are very proud of you. DFW Commander Joe Scanlon will now place the American flag on the symbolic grave. Joe. On behalf of our glorious republic, for whose integrity our comrades enlisted and served, we place this emblem of our nation, the flag of our country, as theirs to defend. Its glorious colors shall wave over them in death as in life, for everyone to behold. VFW Post and District Service Officer Dutch DeGroote will now place a wreath on the grave on behalf of the Mount Prospect Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 1337. We place this wreath in memory of all our comrades who have gone before us in service to their beloved country. May God bless them. VFW Chaplain Ron Willer will place blue flowers on the grave.
That, by the way, is Howard Richardson, World War II veteran. <laughs> Accompanied by a U.S. Marine over there. On behalf of post-1337 veterans of foreign wars of the United States, we place this symbol of remembrance. BFW Quartermaster Chuck Orn will place white flowers on the grave. We place this symbol of purity on our comrade's grave. May each future generation emulate the unselfish courage of all men and women who fought for freedom. American Legion Senior Vice Commander Joe Schmidt will place red flowers on the grave. In memory of the heroic dead who have fallen in defense of the United States of America, we place this tribute of our devotion and everlasting remembrance. American Legion Past Commander Colonel Bob McKillop will place three red roses on the grave. The placement of three red roses is symbolic to those who faithfully serve past, present, and future. Mount Prospect Village Mayor Jurasek and Village Trustees will show their respect for the fallen by placing a special bouquet on the grave. In remembrance of past Mount Prospect residents who perished while serving in the armed forces of the United States of America. Now, if there are other organizations or individuals who wish to place flowers or tribute on the grave, please do so now.
Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed the reason why I love this village of Mount Prospect and why I raised my children here. A, uh, a quick reminder, as I do every year, that since 2008, 10 years ago, all veterans, in or out, in or out of uniform, covered or not, are encouraged to render a military-style hand salute during the playing of the national anthem, not just at national rem remembrances like today, but any time the anthem is played. So if you're at Wrigley Field or some other ballpark, they play the national anthem, salute with pride during the national anthem. I encourage you to do so. The Marching Knights Band will now play the national anthem. Would everyone please stand? Posts and firing details. Attention, hut, present. and firing detail, order, pull. Post will remain at attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Officer of the day, take charge and execute the rifle salute. Post, attention, hut, present, Post, order, pull. That is. Comrades, in the silent land beyond, wherever your remains may rest, these solemn services will hold in honor and tribute to you. I'd like to call on our bagpiper, Kevin Chapman, who will play Amazing Grace. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kevin. Our bugler is Korean veteran Steve Shamella. Everyone, please stand. Posts and firing detail. Ten, hut, present, huh. Bugler, sound taps. Take your seats. Senior Pastor Chris Whitby of St. Paul Lutheran Church will now give the benediction. Posts will remain covered. Would you pray with me? The gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a good and bountiful land where you have blessed us with all we need to support this body and life. And for this, we offer up to you our unending praise. Lord, you have further blessed us with the values that have formed and preserved our nation, the values of freedom, justice, and peace. Lord, we ask that you would teach us always to use the blessings that you have given to us in care for our neighbor, and that, Lord, you would also then preserve us in these good gifts. Let the plots and plans of evildoers come to nothing, Lord, and those that pursue them for our good in justice Lord, always temper our pursuit of justice with your mercy. Lord, we know that these gifts that have come from you have come at the cost of fellow citizens, men and women who have valued these blessings for us so much that they have offered themselves in service to our nation, and some, Lord, who have paid the ultimate price of their own lives for our freedoms. Lord, as we have honored their sacrifice today, we ask that you would comfort their families with the knowledge that their loved ones have sacrificed, Lord, for our good, that they have preserved for us the gifts that you would give to us, and that, Lord, their sacrifice was not in vain, for we celebrate and hold dear always what they have done for us. And yet, Lord, we know that the price of our freedom is continued vigilance. Lord, for there are those who still watch over us, who stand in harm's way, that we might be protected. Lord, we ask that you would stand by the men and women who currently serve in our armed forces. Shield them with your almighty arm, Lord. Give courage where there is danger. And Lord, we ask that you would let them always be righteous in carrying out their duties for us. And then, Lord, when their time of service has come to its completion, bring them home soon and safely to families who miss them and to a nation that is indebted to them. These things we lift up before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. The veterans of foreign wars of Mount Prospect extend a warm thank you to our sponsors, the Village of Mount Prospect, the Mount Prospect Park District, and of course, Chris on the sound system every year. Thank you, Chris. The Mount Prospect Lions Club, American Legion Post 525, Bussy Automotive, Bussy Flowers, the Marching Knights of Prospect High School, and of course, the Mount Prospect Community Band. The continuous support of these organizations make this ceremony possible. In a few minutes, we will gather next door to dedicate the new memorial pillar created specifically and specially to honor Mount Prospect's fallen comrades. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you stay in your places to show proper respect while the Community Band plays the official march of the United States, the Stars and Stripes Forever. Thank you all for joining us in this solemn remembrance of Memorial Day, and may God bless you all. Following this song, the posts are dismissed. Maestro?
Ladies and gentlemen, I know because you're here that the true meaning of Memorial Day is in your hearts. I thank you for that. I hope to see you all next year. Have a great rest of the day. I was lucky enough to be able to chair this committee that did this beautiful uh, pillar here, and I've never worked with a, a better group of people in my life that were so unselfish and worked so hard and uh, put all the venues of the community together. So uh, we're very fortunate. We already have a couple of names that we're going to add on later on. Probably about uh, one just came to my attention this morning at about 10:30, uh, and uh, we have another Purple Heart recipient at least from uh, Afghanistan that we're going to add on to there. And uh, it was just a great project. And uh, we had one guy that was just phenomenal in looking up names. We had a skilled writer with Jane Murphy over there that put all this th in context. We had the Historical Society, uh, the village itself, uh, the library. It was everybody got involved in this project. We started in December, and uh, we had a timeline to make it uh, for Memorial Day, and we beat it. These uh, bricks were actually in Grave Friday. <laughs> so uh, we, we cut it a little short there. Uh, but right now what we're gonna do is a short ceremony as soon as I find uh, Colonel Starr, and we're gonna read the names off of uh, these fallen he heroes. Some of them on this side, they're Purple Heart recipients, they were killed in action. And for those of you that might not know that, they were killed on the battlefield. On the other side, we have other members of Mount Prospect that died while they were on active duty. Some of them were in accidents, some of them were lost at sea, some of them the bodies were never recovered. We did extensive uh, research on this, so they're on the other side. Uh, they gave their all for our, by serving our country as well. Uh, so we've separated in these two different items. Unfortunately, you're going to see that we have blank spots here. And those are for people in the future that might be added to this uh, uh, memorial. So uh, we're very graceful, again, for everybody that participated. And here's Colonel Starr. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I got tied up just a little bit back there. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Abraham Lincoln wrote of those who perished in the great struggle of his age that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. For our beloved fallen comrades listed here, that cause was and remains the promotion of this nation's highest ideals, equality, freedom, justice, and democracy. Let's honor their memory by humbly continuing to serve that noble cause. Thank you. Now let's read the names. Pastor Russ Bechtel. Captain Arthur W. Flesh, Army Air Corps. First Lieutenant, died 19 November 1944 in India. First Lieutenant Robert W. Hake, Army Air Corps, died 17 September 1944 in India. Staff Sergeant Herman J. Heidi, Army Corps of Engineers, died 6 January 1943 in Tunisia. Lieutenant Philip Winston Kaiser, Army Air Corps, killed in action 25 March 1945 in France. Chaplain Ron Willer. Thank you, Colonel. Private First Class Elmer Henry Piepenbrink, Army Infantry, killed in action 6 March 1945 in Germany. Private First Class Frank F. Schott, Jr., Army Signal Corps, died 24 February 1945 in Leyte, Philippines. Staff Sergeant Victor William Sander, Army Tank Corps, killed in action 31 March 1945 in Germany. Great Massey.
Lance Corporal William Daly, United States Marine Corps, killed in action January 29, 1969, in Quang Nam, Vietnam. Second Lieutenant David William Skibb, United States Marine Corps, killed in action 2 March 70, in Quang Nam, Vietnam. Corporal Frank Gagliano, Army Infantry, killed in action 16 February 1967 in Darlock, South Vietnam. Private, First Class Ronald Dean Odom, U.S. Army Artillery, died 28 May 1984. Legion Chaplain Lee Jensen. <coughs> Master Sergeant Richard Chumbly, U.S. Air Force, died 26 February 1981, lost over the South China Sea. Lieutenant Glenn Edward Miller, U.S. Navy, died 18 August 1984, lost over the Indian Ocean. Major Michael John Keane, U.S. Air Force, died 22 May 1987 near Edwards Air Force Base, California. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our dedication of the pillar. You're welcome to see and see it, touch it. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.